Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm here in sunny Ilkley to look at a building to give me inspiration for the next part of Chandwell. Next to the old town hall, which was opened in 1857, will be the former Wesleyan Assembly Hall, completed in 1903. The hall served as Chandwell's Methodist Church between 1969 and 1985, after which it became Revs, a car parts supplier. The building is based on Chapel House in Ilkley, right down to its imagined history, taken from its blue plaque. I often use architectural drawings when designing my buildings, but I couldn't find any for this particular example. I therefore had to use the time-honoured technique of brick counting to help me get a design that looks right and which will work in situ on the layout. Let's take a look then at drawing a building from a picture. The first thing we need to do is get a general feel for the building's dimensions. Although I walk past the real thing every weekend, I've never actually measured it in real life. I therefore turned to Google Earth. By zooming into the building and using the measure tool, I can tap both sides of the building and it suggests that it's 12.2 metres wide. That's 12,200 millimetres. Divide that by N scale, 148, and that becomes close enough to 82 millimetres. I'm using the free software Inkscape to do my drawing but this technique works regardless of how you draw. Let's draw a rectangle 82 millimetres wide. We're going to need to work out how tall the building is. To do that, we need to know how many courses of stone make up the frontage. Using Google Street View, I simply counted them from the bottom to the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 35, 5, 36, 6, 6, 37, 3, 64, 65, 66. The building is 66 courses of stone tall. On the drawing, I drew a pair of rectangles and then duplicated them 33 times to give me 66 rows. This looks good, but we still need to know how tall this stack of rectangles should be. So how high is the building? We know from looking at it that it's about four stories, but as we know from other Chandwell buildings, a story could be pretty much anything. There are other cues we can use. This looks like a pretty much standard sized door. As a rule of thumb, I usually take these as 2.2 metres, or in end scale, 14.86 millimetres. Let's draw that. I found a photo of the building online, and there is a Vauxhall Corsa with an 07 plate parked out front. The top of the car is almost exactly the same height as six rows of stone. A Google search tells me that the Corsa is 1,488 millimetres. Divide that by 6 and that would make each row of stone 252.6 millimetres high. Multiply that by 66 and that would make the building 16.67 metres tall. Divide that by 148 and you get, in end scale, that is 112.66 millimetres. Let's update the drawing. So how high is this door? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, almost 9 rows of stone. Let's check back at Street View. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, almost 9. So it may not be perfect, but it's good enough for me. The building is 16.7 metres high. Now we've got all that sorted out, we can add some horizontal guidelines to help with the drawing of the building. The bottom of the windows are five rows of stone up. Let's add a line. And let's also name the line so we don't get confused later. The windows themselves start one row higher. By simply counting courses of stone like this, I added the other guidelines, which will help me later on. So now it's time to start arranging everything else. A centre line on the guide can help, so I added that. Let's start with the door. I drew a rectangle between the top and the bottom guidelines. But how wide do I make it? I looked at the building on Street View and using an on-screen ruler, noticed that the door was around 20% of the full width of the building. 20% of 82 millimetres is therefore 16.4 millimetres. Using the same techniques, I drew in the rest of the rectangular parts, taking care to keep the elements symmetrical on the building's frontage. When it came time to draw in the building's outline, I did it like this at first. 
although I'd walked past it countless times, it wasn't until drawing it that I realised that it actually slopes inwards. And not just in one straight line either. The sides slope in more like this. Using more guidelines and measurements, I used Inkscape's curve tools to sketch in the outline of the doorway arch, and then the main arched window. This was the most difficult part to do. Because all the photos of the building are taken from below, it's not possible to gauge just how thick the stone edge is. You are always looking up into it, so it looks fatter than it really is. I had to use an element of guesswork here. At this point, I printed the building as a line drawing onto basic copier paper. With a couple of folds, it dropped onto High Street and I could tell straight away that it would look superb. So it's time to add the last few details. With the overall measurements worked out, it was just a case of adding in some of the additional detail. I added stonework relief, corrected the window alignments, added the scroll work, and drew in the interesting shape of the top. And then I used rectangles and lines to give my best impression of the beautiful stone window tracery. As a final check, I used Adobe Lightroom to straighten up a screenshot of the building from Street View. I scaled it to match my measurements and then dropped it on top of my drawing in Inkscape. Ah oh, yes, that'll do. That will do. If you'd like some more details about using brick counting and Inkscape in particular, then Alan at Alan's Trains has a series of useful tutorials. There's a link to his channel in the description of this video. His scratch build of Stockton Station really is something. I'll start to make the impressive main window next, because if I can't get that right, then there's no point continuing with this build. If you'd like to see behind the scenes progress as I go, please do consider joining my channel as a member. This silver button will explain more. Regardless of that, please join me next time when we'll see how much progress I make on revs. Here's a look at the last time I did some fancy glazing. That was on the Poor Law building. Until next time then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you then.